For centuries, humans have been debating some of the most fundamental questions about our existence. For instance, what is the meaning of life? Or what came first, the chicken or the egg? Or how about, is a hot dog in fact a sandwich? AI is already being used to solve some of the world's most complex problems, and it's only getting smarter. Now, for the first time, artificial intelligence is being used to try and answer these unsolvable questions. In this video, we will get to see what AI has to say about some of the most debated questions of all time. AI is still in its early stages of development, but it has already been used to achieve some remarkable things, such as developing self-driving cars, diagnosing diseases, and even writing creative content. AI has access to a vast amount of data and information, and it can process that data much faster than humans can. Because of this, AI can identify patterns and connections that humans might have missed. So we've had our AI review hundreds of articles, books, and videos on the most debated questions of all time. And we're confident that in this video we will provide a comprehensive and informative overview of AI answers to some of the most debated questions of all time. We hope that you'll learn something new. So grab your thinking caps and your snacks, folks, because we're about to answer the those questions you never knew you needed answers to. We wanted to start off a little easy, so the first question we asked the AI was a pretty simple one. The question is, what's the correct toilet paper orientation? And the AI responded with, there are some people that prefer the under position, where the toilet paper hangs behind the roll, away from the wall. It reduces the risk of a toddler or house pet unrolling the toilet paper when batting at the roll. Also and more importantly, it makes it easier to tear off a piece of toilet paper on a perforated sheet boundary. While some people prefer the over position, where the toilet paper hangs in front of the roll, parallel to the wall. They argue that it reduces the risk of accidentally brushing the wall or cabinet with one's knuckles, potentially transferring grime and germs. Also, you can easily visually locate and grasp a loose end. And, it gives the option to fold over the last sheet to show off some flair, or to show that the room has been cleaned. So technically there's no right or wrong way to hang a toilet paper roll, as it depends on various factors such as personal taste, convenience, hygiene, safety, and environmental impact. Yeah, we didn't love that answer either. So we had AI do a second wipe, and Ew. a big discovery turned up. So come to find out, toilet paper laying in the over position is the intended direction to view the manufacturer's branding, so patterned toilet paper looks better this way. It's also noted that the toilet paper is in the over position in illustrations for the first patents for free hanging toilet roll holders issued all the way back in 1891. Lastly, according to various surveys, around 70% of people prefer the over position. So it looks like the over position wins, interesting for sure. And we're curious, how many of you are in that 30% placing the roll under group? Let us know down in those comments. And while you do that, we're on to the next question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? All right, let us break it down for you in the simplest terms possible. We're gonna settle this age-old debate. Now, picture this, you're at a picnic, minding your own business, and suddenly you see someone chowing down on a hot dog. You start pondering, is that thing a sandwich? Well, my friend, the answer is a resounding no. And here's why. First off, let's talk about what defines a sandwich. A sandwich is typically made by placing some kind of filling between two slices of bread. Take a classic PB&J for instance. You've got your peanut butter and jelly sandwich between two slices of bread. Simple right, but a hot dog, it's a whole different ballgame. Think of a hot dog bun as a magical vessel specifically designed to cradle the glorious hot dog. It's like a squishy, cozy bed for that juicy glizzy. And here's the kicker, the bun isn't sliced into two separate pieces, it's connected. It's like a little bread canoe, ready to sail your hot dog dreams down the river of deliciousness. Now, here's a verifiable fact for you, the word sandwich actually originated from John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Legend has it that he requested his meat be served between two slices of bread so he could continue gambling without getting his hands greasy. So, if the Earl himself didn't call it a hot dog sandwich, who are we to argue? According to the USDA, a sandwich is a meat or poultry filling between two slices of bread, a bun, or a biscuit. By that definition, a hot dog seems to qualify as a sandwich since it is a meat filling between a split bun. Merriam-Webster and Dictionary.com also support this view by defining a hot dog as a sandwich consisting of a frankfurter and a split roll, usually eaten with mustard, sauerkraut, or relish. However, many people argue that while a hot dog technically fits the dictionary definition of a sandwich, it is simply not a sandwich. It is its own thing, with its own history and culture. People argue that a hot dog is not cut in half, but placed in a slit or pocket 
pocket of the bun. This makes it more like a taco or a pita than a sandwich. A hot dog is not interchangeable with other sandwich fillings, but has its own specific shape and flavor. You cannot make a ham and cheese hot dog or a peanut butter and jelly hot dog. A hot dog is not ordered or served as a sandwich, but as its own category of food. You do not go to a sandwich shop to buy a hot dog, nor do you see it on sandwich menus. You also do not eat it with the same utensils or etiquette as a sandwich. The National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, an industry group that promotes and celebrates hot dogs and sausages, has officially declared that a hot dog is not a sandwich. They argue that limiting the hot dog's significance by saying it's just a sandwich is like calling Jesus just a guy. They claim that the hot dog is an exclamation of joy, a food, a verb describing one showing off and even an emoji. In conclusion, my dear child, a hot dog is not a sandwich. It's a unique creation, a culinary masterpiece that defies the laws of sandwichdom. So, next time someone tries to tell you that a hot dog is just another sandwich, you can kindly laugh in their face and explain the truth. And our last question for this video, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Ah, the age-old question that has baffled minds for centuries? Let's break it down. Evolution tells us that species gradually change over time. So, somewhere in the distant past, there must have been a creature that was almost but not quite a chicken. Let's call it a proto-chicken for simplicity's sake. This proto-chicken mated with another proto-chicken, and voila, an egg was laid. Inside that egg, a slightly genetically mutated chick emerged, and that, my friend, was the first true chicken. So, technically speaking, the egg came first. But hey, don't get too excited, because the egg didn't just magically appear out of thin air. It was laid by a creature that was almost a chicken. You see, the egg and the chicken are intertwined in a never-ending cycle of confusion. Now, let's throw in a verifiable fact just to spice things up. Did you know that according to a study published in the journal Paleontology, scientists discovered the oldest known fossilized chicken-like creature in China? This ancient bird, called Oronis zui, lived approximately 160 million years ago. So, we can safely say that chickens, or at least their distant relatives, have been strutting around the planet for quite some time. In conclusion, pondering the origins of the chicken and the egg is like trying to understand why people find cat videos on the internet so amusing. It's an enigma wrapped in a mystery. So, let's just embrace the absurdity and move on to more important questions, like why do we park in the driveway but drive on the parkway? Well, that wraps up this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please show your support by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. Our current milestone is reaching 500 subscribers and we genuinely appreciate you for sticking with us until this point in the video. If you have any other burning questions you'd like us to tackle with AI in future videos, feel free to share them in the comments below and we'll definitely consider making more content like this. And as always, stay curious.